The Janul 12 incubator is a great incubator for those new at hatching eggs. It is very inexpensive and is usually sold for a little less than $70 on Amazon. Although there are a few flaws with this model, it is perfect for those that are just getting into incubating and don't want to pay a lot of money. In this video, I will be showing how to set up a Janul 12 incubator. Starting with assembly, there are six parts, the base, the bottom tray, the top tray, the adjustable egg turner, the egg tray dividers, and the top with all of the electronics. To start off, place the bottom tray in the base with the feet pointing down. Next, take the top tray and place it inside. Make sure the side with the ridges is facing up. These ridges act as a fence to keep the egg turner in place. This egg tray is probably my favorite part about this incubator since it is fully adjustable to fit pretty much every egg, including parakeet, quail, cockatiel, chicken, bantam chicken, bantam duck, regular sized duck, goose, guinea eggs, and more. It is very easy to adjust the size of each bay. These dividers slide in and out very easily and you can make each bay a different size in case you wanted to incubate standard and bantam sized chicken eggs at the same time. And like any incubator, it is always a good idea to put your own calibrated thermometer or hygrometer in the incubator to keep track of the temperature and humidity levels. While this model does display the temperature, I find it to be slightly inaccurate and prefer the readings of the thermometers I've added instead. The Janelle 12 incubator's temperature is also displayed in Celsius, which I can't read. This digital thermometer slash hygrometer made by Thermapro works great and can be bought on Amazon for around $11. And as a bonus, it can display the temperature in Fahrenheit. Finally, put the top cover on. It is very important to make sure that this metal rod goes into the egg tray like this. Otherwise, the eggs won't be turned. One thing I have found with this incubator is that you don't need a lot of water to raise the humidity since this incubator is so small. I'm great at adding way too much water at once, so to help stabilize the humidity levels if they are too high, I like to take a small piece of paper and fold it a couple times to increase the thickness. Then I just place one folded piece of paper in the top left and another one in the bottom right to give it more ventilation while the humidity levels decrease. You have to be careful not to make that paper too thick as that may decrease the temperature as well. The key is to make sure that the humidity levels are equal everywhere in the incubator, not just the side where the hygrometer is. Now that the incubator is assembled, let's plug it in. The cord is about 5 feet long, so it should be long enough as long as your incubator is close to an outlet. Now that the incubator is on, it will automatically start to warm up. The incubator should be factory set at 37.5 degrees Celsius, which is 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. This is perfect for chicken eggs, but in case you need to adjust it, push the set button once, then use the plus or minus buttons to get it to your desired temperature. Then. Push the set button again to save your changes and return to the normal display. The only other settings I use are the high and low temperature setting. These settings are supposed to make sure that your incubator will not go above or below these temperatures. To change these settings, hold down the set button, then use the plus and minus buttons until you see LS. Then, push the set button again and use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the lowest temperature your incubator will reach. I don't want my incubator temperature going below 37.5 degrees Celsius, so I set mine at 37.4. Once that is done, push set again and use the plus or minus buttons until you reach HS. This will control the highest temperature your incubator will reach. I don't ever want my incubator to be hotter than 37.5 degrees Celsius, so I like to set this at 37.6. Once these settings are where you want them, just wait a few seconds and the display will go back to normal and display the temperature. Although these settings should keep it at the correct temperature, it is always best to run the incubator without any eggs inside with your own thermometer at least for one day, just to make sure that the temperature is where you want it. Although this might not be the case with everybody's General 12 incubator, I have noticed that despite the fact that my temperature is set at 37.5 degrees Celsius or 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, my calibrated thermometers are both reading around 96 degrees Fahrenheit, which is much lower than the temperature I set the incubator at. To fix this, I set my temperature a little higher than average at 38 degrees Celsius to raise the temperature. Keep in mind that this might not be the case with everybody's incubator. There are a lot of factors that could be interfering with the temperature in your incubator, such as the season, room temperature, the room your incubator is in, whether or not it's by a vent or window, and more. I just figured I'd mention it as another reason to run your incubator with your own thermometer inside and check it several times a day to ensure the temperature is where you want it before you put any eggs in. 
It is also a good idea to play with the humidity levels in the incubator before you put eggs in. Keep in mind that the humidity is not the amount of water you put in, but instead the surface area that the water covers. Once again, I highly recommend getting your own thermometer slash hygrometer to use inside. I like to keep my Thermopro in this area to the left where it can't interfere with the egg turner. And I like to put another small thermometer and hygrometer right here in front of the egg tray so I don't have to open the incubator every time I have to check the humidity. I just like to keep my Thermopro in the incubator because I find its readings are more accurate. However, it is nice having the smaller hygrometer in there since it can still give me a rough idea of where the humidity levels are at without having to open the incubator. Now that the incubator is assembled, the temperature is correct, and the humidity is at the right level, it is time to put the eggs in. I like to date my eggs and put the breed on them in pencil, which not only helps to identify what hatched, but it helps to show if the tray is actually turning the eggs. Finally, put the top cover on, make sure the metal rod is lined up with the egg tray, and it is ready to go. Now, in 21 days, we should have some adorable fluffy baby chicks.